Welcome back to my channel. This is Fiona at Drawings in a Drawer and today we're going to be painting a simple portrait on cold pressed paper and this will be easy for everyone to do even for beginners. Before we start I just wanted to remind you that all my full length narrated tutorials are on my Patreon starting at the $5 a month tier and that will be linked down below and right now there's limited access to the full length tutorial of the watercolour noses. You can get to that just by going to the link down below again and take that tutorial. Share your work and tag me on Instagram if you do any of my tutorials, by the way. But now let's dive into painting on cold press paper. The easiest way to start painting watercolour portraits is on cold press paper because it's so much more forgiving than hot pressed. Make sure it's good quality, of course. And what I did in the beginning, which is kind of different from what I do now, is I would go over the whole face with a mixture of red, maybe cadmium red and yellow ochre. Now I added a little bit of cerulean blue in that mixture as well, just to tone things down a little. So once I'd covered the whole area of the face with paint, I would go in with something like Madder Lake Red Light into the cheek while the paper was still wet. And as you can see, it's very visible and then I would go around that spot of paint with a clean damp brush and smooth things out to make the transition seamless and to achieve this effect of this glowing peachy uh, skin. Especially in the first stages it's important to work wet and wet, to work while everything is still wet and cold pressed paper really holds a lot of water and it never buckles. So. Another thing I did a lot in the beginning, so it's very beginner friendly, is lifting. Now the lifting technique helps us achieve highlights and correct mistakes. And there are two ways you can do this. By pressing your clean damp brush in a certain area and lifting the paint out. Or even, and you will see me do this in this video soon, is with kitchen paper. Lifting with kitchen paper is easier because it's more absorbent than your watercolour brush. And by doing this, as I said, not only can you correct mistakes if, for example, you've put too much paint down in a certain area, but you can also achieve the effect of highlights. Between steps, be sure to keep everything wet. And if your paper has dried in the meanwhile, just go in with a damp brush. You don't want it to be sopping wet and just re-wet the whole area of the face so that you can start painting on a wet surface again. And this will help you get that very smooth finish that we are looking for. And that in the beginning, as you're starting out in your watercolour journey, seems so hard to achieve. And something else you want to do is go over the whole area of the skin with water tinted with some yellow ochre or some raw sienna. This helps bring a warm glow to the whole uh, face, to the whole skin. And of course, while that is still wet, you can then go in with those pinks and those reds on the lips, on the cheeks, on the eyelids, and everything will spread on its own, almost like the paint is automatically blending itself on the paper. If you see any hard edges, just go in with your clean damp brush and smooth them out. And this will be very easy to do. your best friend. Keep it by your side at all times when painting and use it to lift. In this case I'm using it to lift out highlights, kind of larger areas of highlights where the light is shining off the skin. And of course at the end I will also go into the skin with white gouache acrylic 
and this will help me to define the highlights and get that extra sparkle that I like having in my portraits. I like to use green when I paint skin and in this case I use it as a shadow. It's an olive green so it's not a very bright green and I think this colour works really well with the other colours I have used in this portrait. So don't shy away from using it in shadow areas and in areas where the skin is finer like for example underneath the eye. lilacs are also good colours to use to hint at shadow areas or areas where the skin is cooler. If you're new at watercolour or if you're not confident in painting watercolour portraits maybe you don't want to go into dark sharp shadows. So using a violet or a blue to hint at shadow areas for example around the eye, in the eye socket, close to the bridge of the nose, also in the corners of the lips is a good idea and is less scary and will keep everything soft and delicate and cohesive. I also like using it in the eyeball because the white of the eye is never actually white. I think I've probably said this before, so be sure to get rid of the white of the paper and doing it with violet or with a blue is a good idea. I also use it in the forehead because again that is an area where the skin is thinner and closer to the bone so the skin will have a cooler tone to it. Once I've laid my colour down, I regularly pause to check over and see if there are any hard edges anywhere and I go in with my clean damp brush and smooth them out. As I've mentioned, cold press paper stays wet for a very long time so it's easy to go in and correct these so-called mistakes even after a while. painting the lip it's very important to keep things soft lips do not have harsh outlines so don't go in with thick paint go in with paint that's quite watery and be very delicate smooth things out outside and beyond the lip line if you have to but remember that the pink the blush of the lip does not end at the lip line as your painting dries, you will see that everything dries lighter and especially the blush that you are trying to achieve or that I am trying to achieve in this painting at least and in almost every painting because it's something that I like doing will have also dried lighter. So what you do is you just repeat the previous step. Go in with more paint, go kind of more intense in the centre of the blush area and smooth things out with a clean damp brush. And just do this as many times as you need to until your blush is bright enough or as bright as you want it once your paper has dried. fun painting. In this case I went in with green, the same green I used in the skin and by doing this I create a wet surface I could then work on and I dropped cerulean blue into it with the tip of my brush. I then went in and added some burnt umber again just with the very tip of my brush and let that spread out like creating specks of this uh, brown colour almost like in a hazel eye. And then I almost always use lifting technique in the eye again using my clean slightly damp brush but almost dry. I will go in and using the scrubbing motion will lift out the paint from the bottom of the iris as very often the forehead, the brow bone and the eyelid and eyelashes cast a shadow on the upper half of the iris while the lower half is lighter.
When it comes to the hair, I almost always like keeping things very simple. So I go in with a wash of a lighter color, according to how dark I want to go. In this case, it was burnt sienna. And while I wait for that to dry, I might work on some other areas of the painting. And once that wash has dried, I will go in with a darker color, leaving some of the underlying paint showing through. Wait for that next wash to dry and then go in with a final layer. So that is how I paint the hair, unless I'm going for a more detailed look or curls or something that requires a little bit more layers than this. Using a brush that has very little water on it helps you create the effect of hair strands. So using a very confident brush stroke will help you achieve the appearance of locks of hair. For the third and final layer of your hair, remember to use a consistency that is buttery and again remember not to cover up your second layer, your previous layer of hair completely. And the lighter areas will work as highlights. and pinks around the eye area to make the gaze more intense. And I'll take this chance again to remind you that for this step, watch my Painting the Nose in Watercolour tutorial. You have the short version here on YouTube on my feed, or you have the full length version on my Patreon at the moment that is free and anyone can access it. eyelashes and eyebrows in my book less is more I use a quite thick consistency for the eyelashes of course because I need control but when it comes to the eyebrows I more or less use the same technique I used for the hair but I tend not to go crazy with the eyebrows other because they can very easily overpower the face so unless it's a specific trait of the person you're painting be very gentle when you're painting the eyebrows. final stages of my portrait I go in with the glazing technique again with another watery layer of uh, yellow ochre just to warm things up and you don't always have to do this you have to assess if your painting needs it or not but it does help kind of pull everything together and give a more cohesive look. And for the highlights I put some down with my paintbrush using white acrylic gouache or I smooth them out with my fingertip. And 
in the end I couldn't resist and went in and added some flowers in the neck area. However, this is the end of my tutorial. If you enjoyed this, please consider leaving a comment down below and I will leave everything like my Instagram and Patreon and my Skillshare classes in the box down below. So if you want to have a look, they'll be there and I will see you next week. Bye for now.